Good morning, everyone. It is Taco About Tuesday. Uh, that's the Sugar Taco or Taco Bell. Talk About Tuesday. Welcome, everybody. We are rocking and rolling here. Let's get the questions rolling. Daydream, Keaton, Mario. Welcome, Anthony. Welcome, 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 everybody. We are looking forward to uh, having a great time today on what we're going to talk about. Talk About Tuesday. Another blessed day, another blessed group of people. Welcome everybody, Lori. Great to see you as well, always. Uh, hey, Zeus, my savior in the house. We're going to pin up how to get uh, my book, ebook, audiobook. I will sign a book, send it to you, and pay for it. David at dmelter.com. If at any time you hear about a template or a guide or anything else uh, that you're looking at, uh, then just go ahead. And email me, david at dmelzer.com. Scott Bus is coming on about three minutes from now. Let's take a quick question before Scott comes on. We're all good there. Advice for someone who wants to be a sports agent. Uh, I have two pieces of advice for sports agency. It has nothing to do with going to law school or business school or where you should intern or what major you should have or what college you should go to. Practice getting a client and keeping a client. The best sports agents in the world, they can be sure to get clients and keep them. Those are the two skill sets that I look for. Uh, when I ran the most notable sports agency in the world, I look for guys that could get clients and keep them and uh, practice the skill sets, the knowledge of who and what, and have that desire uh, that you can get a client, but also keep a client. Those are the two superpowers of being a sports agent. Uh, we are rocking and rolling here. We will bring Scott Buss on in a couple minutes. Welcome everybody. How often does your ego get in the way? Well, the ego creates interference itself. The interference is what gets in the way of what I already am. Uh, I try to only allow the ego to edge, e -G, <laughs> edge goodness out, O, oh, edge goodness out by creating interference with the need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, so uh, how often does it happen? It happens often, but I only spend minutes and moments in that ego-based consciousness because I've learned to stop, drop, and roll. Uh, the ego is not your amigo, folks. That's what Keaton has learned. Uh, I love that as well. Very good. Last question, and then we'll bring Scott Buss on. Who does Miles predict to win the opening game, Cowboys or Bucks? He predicts the Bucks. I predict the Cowboys. So... We'll see who's right. My money would be on. I don't know. Uh, but Miles is much better. Uh, and has much more knowledge than I do because he studies this stuff all the time. Devin, good to see you. Uh, all right. Let's uh, bring on Scott Buss. He is the founder and CEO of Advent Jets. And really interested. Everybody was asking me here. I went to a very fancy wedding. Hey, hey, Scott, how are you? Hey, good morning. How are you doing, Dave? I'm fantastic. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, there's so much going on in the private uh, airline industry, uh, and Advent Jet uh, has been around. And you guys, uh, I'd love to discuss number one, how your business has changed through COVID, and two, you know, how you've been able to uh, stand out uh, within a very crowded space. Sure. Great, great questions. I appreciate it the time. Uh, basically, Advent Jets with the COVID, a lot of people don't want to fly commercial just because of they feel they're on top of everybody. And with the, you know, some take take the COVID very serious, obviously. And when you can fly private to a different destination and not have to deal and be there 15 minutes prior to takeoff, and you can be with your friends and family, bring your pets with you. There's no headache going through TSA. It just makes the experience a lot easier and safer for everybody involved. And to pivot on the second part, we stand out because a lot of your private aviation companies out there, they're great companies, but they mostly focus on just your basic transportation, where we basically focus on your door to destination. Meaning, if you need a global chauffeur, a sprinter, a tour bus, you need to go to, you want a chef involved, you want private executives, security, you want to go to a private island, you want to go to a yacht, we can facilitate everything off of one car. So we are your luxury lifestyle management company all around the world. Yeah, even helicopters, I know we've utilized uh, Advent for those types of things. And, you know, there is a difference uh, in quality of service as well. 
you know, there's a lot of overselling, back end selling, lying, manipulating uh, in the business as I've flown private uh, a lot in my life. And sometimes it's more of a hassle uh, when people are not uh, living by their word they, or, or, or trying their best to manage expectations. And there's nothing more frustrating than paying a ton of money uh, to have a worse experience than commercial. Correct. Uh, I, 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 agree, I agree, and you brought you brought up a big principle. I'm from the Midwest originally, and living out in Scottsdale, I I always say because I'm self taught, I believe in trust and transparency are going to be your successful if you're trust and transparency with everybody. Yeah, and what, and what is your business model? I mean, there's so many different you know uh, membership fees, hours, you know, in which causes the variance and the the margins to be kind of hidden. Uh, yep. You know, I'm uh, I'm a big fan of everybody making money. So I love people that are very straightforward with, hey, here's what it costs. This is what I'm making. Here, here's what we're doing. What's your what's your structure? Sure. Our structure is we have fly as you want, no minimum hours. But we do have some memberships, which allows you to get um, the hours at a less expensive per hour. But you're also getting some services like access to VIP events, uh, you're getting cybersecurity with one of our top firms in the United States. So there's also value with the membership. Our, mem our memberships are 15000 and 25000 And I know to some people that sounds expensive, but you talk about Sentinel Jet, that's 150000 just to join with them. And we also are family. We believe in bringing our brands and like-minded people. And we also work with them, thought partners, whiteboard. We're not all about ROI with financial, it could be marketing. That's how we work together. So that's kind of our model is work with people that are um, long term. And how has business been uh, going through COVID? Has it increased or decreased for you? For, it's it's increased. Um, I've scaled my business. So I take the negative with COVID and took it into a positive where I had to grow the company. So I it, it's been great. And we're just not in the United States. We're, we're over in Europe and uh, Dubai and Everywhere I mean, people want to fly private. And how do you guys handle empty legs? I mean, one of the extra values is always the empty legs, and there's been different companies that have been able yep. to utilize that better than others. How have you guys been able to, to facilitate the empty legs to your membership? Sure, and you bring up a very, very great point. There are empty legs out there, empty aircraft that fly to different destinations. However, because of the increase of private aviation, we would get clients that would usually call us Hey, we want to fly from El San Diego to Vegas today. Those empty legs, empty aircraft are very, very rare now. They're out there, but sometimes you might have to have a week advance. And usually we know within 30 days what aircraft are moving around. So the farther out, so it's good that there's still empty aircraft, but if you're looking at going the same day or the next day, logistically could be a little bit of a challenge. Nice. And then obviously, you know, uh, with COVID, the age and the demographic of safety skews towards older people, which are better clients for you. Uh, you know, ones that have more mature economics, more mature business positions, ones that require us to get to certain places, because it's not just the convenience. I mean, and, and I you know, am not political on, on COVID at all, uh, but there's certain things that just drive me crazy. Like, you know, putting on your mask to walk through a restaurant, then taking it off to sit down, or putting your mask to get on an airplane, get, you know, 200 people on an airplane, and then allow people to take it off to eat and drink, uh, which is fine, right? I, I, I get it, but it seems, you know, as the lawyer in me is like, this seems very inconsistent, arbitrary, and capricious, uh -huh. and trying to keep people safe. Uh, well, and you bring up a great point. If you watch football this weekend, 100,000 people in these stadiums jumping around. So I, yeah. get, I know what you're saying. Right. And then they make the kids wear masks to class. Yeah. <laughs> or, or run track. You got to wear a mask. Right, 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 right. Um, you know, for, for you, where do you see the business going? Because obviously the exposure has been uh, greater now for private aviation. People are starting to see, because it is a strategy on how to use it. It's not, uh, you know, in, in my uh, opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, private aviation for me, there's certain circumstances where the ROI is just, it's a no brainer. And then there's another circumstance where it's just your ego, uh, where you're like, literally, I'll, I'll look at myself and say, how can I not take a $49 Southwest 
fight uh, instead of private when literally from John Wayne with nobody in line, you know, the, the thousands of dollars difference isn't worth it for me. Sure. And you bring up a valid point. For instance, like I'm based in Scottsdale. So we do a lot of business in California. So like at the FBO, where that's the fixed based operator where people will fly into the little terminal like at John Wayne, um, Van Nuys, LAX. The nice thing what a lot of business people are doing is they would charter an aircraft for a day, go to San Diego, L.A., San Francisco, and then they'd still be home in that evening because they can conduct the meetings. We can cater the food in. Now, if you want to rent a car and drive all that, good good luck. And so we're also seeing a lot of businesses, um, how real estate's a very good investment. A lot of businesses are buying aircraft, and then what they do is after they buy it, they, if they have first right to use it, they will charter it out, and we can help facilitate that so their ROI, they're making money on their investment and also utilizing it. Yeah, it's like a beach house, but better. <laughs> <laughs> correct, correct. It's, exactly. But you get to fly private when you want to, and then they, you make money. So it's a win-win. Yeah, it is, and, and there's so many circumstances. I know around events, uh, as we finish up, uh, you know, events are – uh, really great times to use uh, private aviation because there's so many people flying in commercially. There's so many things going on. And a lot of the events take place in more obscure places. You know, if you got to get down to Greenbrier for the Greenbrier Open, uh, you know, good luck. Right? Yep. That, yep. Or, or even Augusta, you know, isn't the easiest in the world. Or Kentucky Derby, for example, is a yep. place that you know, it, there's just certain locations that, you know, if you are, are making the money and your time is worth it, uh, you know, there's a no brainer when it comes to, hey, I, I can get there uh, and do my business and get home. And, you know, I, I don't know if everyone has the same circumstances, but a day of work uh, or a day of get, an activity you get paid for can double the cost of a plane. So you're better off play, paying for getting there instead of spending a day exhausted in a car maybe not get in there <laughs> other things yep. as well yep. and, and you bring up a couple like kentucky derby augusta those are events that we put together uh we'll put like this private distillery wineries golf trips spas you name it anywhere in the world we have destination private islands that we can cater to and help somebody if they want to have some ideas or suggestions but we have we're working on an augusta one right now actually for uh next year which would be nice yeah, which is, you know, part of the reason I've been, you know, with Brakeman, Warren Moon, all the clients at Steinberg for years, whether it was Marquis, Extension, Wheels Up, you guys, Apollo, the, the list will go on. You know, part of it is on, you know, the business development side, you know, on the aviation events that you guys put on, uh, the amount of business you can do is worth the, the, the uh, price in gold uh, for yeah. who you're hanging out with and uh and what you're doing with them so it's always been a business development tool and efficiency tool uh as well as a energy tool meaning uh, you you know to show up to very important activities rested uh yep. instead of the commercial exhaustion that occurs through planes trains and automobiles uh yep. you know anyone that that's or has, is listening really could understand why scott's a great person to call and those you know i do encourage because uh, we've done it at times, you know, purchasing and chartering your own jet can be a great profit center for you and provide you the convenience of having your own plane, a first right of refusal. So uh, yeah. you know, I know that market's taking off as well. Scott, people can find you at adventjets.com, correct? Correct. That is correct. Yep. On Instagram, it's at adventjet. Yep. Awesome, my friend. Well, I look forward to doing more with you. I got a, a few referrals for you. I just went to a very prestigious wedding over the weekend at the Ritz-Carlton, and everybody was nice. asking me how I fly and who I fly with, and uh, uh, I brought up your name, so I knew you were coming on today. So great talking with you. Much appreciated. I appreciate your time, Dave, and like always, have a blessed day. You got Great to see you again. Take care. Great to see you. Bye-bye. Right on. Advent Jets, you know, like anything else, Timing and risk tolerance uh, is the first step, whether or not to fly, fly private or not. Not for everyone, uh, but at certain circumstances, determinative upon your timing and risk tolerance, uh, a great investment to make. Uh, we'll get right back to it. Uh, a little bit of high prestige today. Joseph Storzinger, that's the crowd for you to hang out with. Can you ask him to share his contact information? Just reach out. Uh, at Advent Jet, uh, Scott Bus, uh, AdventJets.com. I can get his cell phone to you as well. 
just email me, david at dmelter.com if you want Scott's info. Uh, great person to know. Um, do you allow meetings on the plane, on the ground? Yes, they do. Uh, I have done that. So it's very good. And in the hangar, how can you be efficient when you have a commute to work? That's easy. You got to get a list of things that you can do while you're driving. So audio books, uh, phone list, uh, you know, a variety of meditative driving uh, techniques that can be utilized. But if you know your what, your who, and your how, you will know what to do now when you're in the car and apply your why to that now. Once again, the five daily practices can be utilized in everything. It's probably about half the answers I give right now. Date at dmelter.com if you want those five daily practices. I'll also throw in my book, ebook, audio book, or I'll even sign a book, send it to you, and pay for shipping if you want. David at dmelter.com. Pin right here. David at dmelter.com. What is on your bucket list? Uh, well, my most recent bucket list was to watch my son uh, score a touchdown and on that breakaway, very first play that he got the ball. He did that. So I got that bucket list. Um, my next bu bucket list item uh, will be the Chargers Super Bowl and take my son to watch a Super Bowl victory from the Los Angeles Chargers from my office podcast studio uh, and suite there at SoFi. Uh, that's my next bucket list item to watch the Chargers with my son and my wife, by the way, win the Super Bowl. Um, that is a definite bucket list for me. And I'm going to see Christina Mollendegal tomorrow. I'm going to do a meetup in Utah. Anybody in Utah tomorrow, come and meet me. Get the information. Email me, david at dmelcher.com. I will be doing a meetup live. Uh, Christina will be there in Utah. Uh, please, Salt Lake City, Utah, please come join me tomorrow. Meet me in person. Uh, awesome. Friends of Kathy Cardenas, me too. She's amazing. What do you do when you feel restless and anxious? I stop, I drop, and I roll. Anxiety, restlessness, our ego-based consciousness, whenever I have a need for that anxiety, I stop, I drop, and I roll. I know my mind, my body, and soul are on fire. I'm creating interference, so I stop. I breathe through my nose and mouth and remind, remember, and recollect what I want, who can I help, and who can help me. How am I going to get it done? What I should do now by what's most important, and then apply my why again. I only spend minutes and moments edging goodness out of my life in that ego. That's not my amigo. It's Talk About Tuesdays. We're talking about how to get out of your own way how to know what you are, to utilize the law of gravity. You are at the right place at the perfect time. Your feet are grounded, even though the world is hurling and spinning and throwing yourself around and rotating. Uh, do not worry. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. You're at the right place at the perfect time. And now just know your what, your who, your how, your now, and apply your why. You will be in a better trajectory with the law of Goya, getting off your ass. You must be what you can be. And the law of allowance, uh, after you clear that interference, will come through. Let's talk about Tuesday. What are we going to talk about next? How do you get back on track after something unexpected happens? Well, I use a non-negotiable routine, uh, an, an adaptable routine with my non-negotiables. When something happened that I do not anticipate that throws me off of balance, I immediately tell myself, this is the most important thing I need to get done. A minimum of an hour on my health, a minimum of this much time with my wife, my 11-year-old son, my teenage daughters, my mom. And then I study my calendar for a minimum amount of time to maximize the what, the who, the how, the now, applying my why to the most efficient, effective, and statistically successful activities by using the lens of productivity, by providing value, the lens of accessibility, by being more accessible to others and accessing what I want, learning how to receive and allow what I've cleared away to expand and grow and accelerate, and of course, the lens of gratitude. I'm constantly seeking what I want, not what I don't want, not what's missing, not what other people want for me. I'm seeking what I want so that I can give it away by appreciating it with gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability, expanding and growing and accelerating in the right trajectory, not away from or creating a void shortage or obstacles, but in the right trajectory. All right, let's talk about Tuesday. We'll keep talking about the questions that you have. How can I exercise patience efficiently? Well, it's a practice. Patience is a practice. And it is counterintuitive to those people that are persistent. Those people that have a desire that they must be what they can be are working at an antithesis to patience. But when you realize that the activity that exists here 
and the activities of the 24 hours that you're given are all about persistence and patience exists at a higher frequency that of thoughtfulness. Patience is a practice of thoughtfulness. Your thoughts move faster than the speed of light. 24 hours a day is based off of the speed of light. That's based off of meaning the time that the light takes to get from the sun to the earth. It's about 186,000 miles per second. And if you can remember that patience does not exist at the speed of light, patience exists at a much higher speed, the speed of thought. Therefore, when we can blend and reconcile our patience with persistence to be able to attach what the energy of thought, the energy in motion, the emotion to the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of your potential, not attaching your uh, emotions, energy and emotion to an outcome when we're persistent towards an outcome instead of persistence towards the consistent behavior to get to a better place, a better situation, using an outcome as a milestone, as a directive, not as an endpoint, you will find that the thoughtfulness of patience will allow things to happen faster even than the persistence that you feel is necessary and the law of Goya that you feel is necessary in order to effectuate what you want. Detach those emotions from the outcome, apply them to the activity of enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential, and you will find abundance. You will get to where you want to be more rapidly and accurately or get to a better place than you thought you would be more rac accurately and rapidly. It is Talk About Tuesday. we got a couple minutes. We will bring Luke on here in a couple minutes from Manly Box, uh, manlybox.com. What are we talking about here on Tuesday? What's your favorite service to do for others? Well, I have to ask them open-ended questions in order to determine how I can best be of service. So uh, to keep an open mind and to find an open mind and ask how I can be of service or value, utilizing open-ended questions uh, is my favorite way to be of service, to do good deeds aligned with what they want to be done. What's up, Donnie? I'm going to see him in Vegas with Michael Phelps and several others. Uh, good to see you. If you haven't Follow Donnie, Donnie Starkins right there. Donnie underscore Starkins. Great guy. Luke is here. Thank you, Jake. We'll bring him on in a couple minutes. Happy Rosh Hashanah. Happy New Year. La Shana Tova to all of those people who uh, celebrate. I celebrate everything celebratable. I'm a celebrant, and I wish all the love and happiness and sweetness in a new year to everyone, a better year, a bigger year, a brighter place, a better situation for everyone, a healthy, happy, wealthy, and worthy clearance for everyone to know what they already are as we are connected to the greatest source of light, love, and lessons at all times. All right, let's talk about Tuesday. We'll take one more question, and we'll bring Luke on from Manly Box. Uh, when did you make a mental change in your life? At what age did you realize this? Uh, two years before I lost everything, uh, approximately when I was 36 years old, I was running the most notable sports agency in the world, Lee Steinberg Sports Entertainment. Uh, I hit rock bottom emotionally. I was lost. I was sad. I was buying things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like. I was overselling, back-end selling, lying, manipulating, and cheating myself, and then projecting that onto others. And uh, my wife, my best friend, Rob, and my father were all catalysts into uh, raising my awareness to what I was doing. And uh, finally, my wife, who I uh, just had my 24th wedding anniversary with, saved my life by telling me I better take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become, or uh, I probably wasn't going to stay alive, uh, let alone uh, stay with her. And so two years before I lost everything, I took stock in gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration, effective communication, changed my life. I've been practicing that uh, now for the what, past 17 years and uh, been able to make great changes and progress in an enlightenment and awareness by using thoughtfulness and blending it with the pragmatic tools that were always ones that I had worked on, but now at a much higher level, knowing, not trying to get happy, not trying to get healthy, not trying to get wealthy, not trying to get worthy, but more important, clearing the interference between me and my health, my wealth, my happiness, and my worthiness. All right, let me bring on Luke uh, from Manly Box. We'll go back up, find Luke. He's here. I saw that. Hopefully, uh, we could go live with Luke is the founder and CEO of Manly Box. His business, Manly Box, is a subscription-based box model and was launched this June. How are you, my friend? David, mate, how are you? Thanks for asking. 
Ah, phenomenal. It's great to have you on here. I love the Manly Box business. I would love for you to share your story on how that business has evolved. Awesome, mate. Well, uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me into the con uh, conversation, mate. It's, a, it's an absolute honor. Um, I, uh, I suppose I'll start. I, I've always had a, a passion for business and, and high performance, but you know, over the years of, of my early kind of work years, I was working in the resources sector in Australia. So like underground diamond drilling, offshore oil and gas. And, you know, throughout my time working in all these harsh, kind of very dangerous environments, I knew this wasn't my end game, you know, I knew it wasn't going to last forever. Um, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know, you know, I hadn't really found my purpose, so to speak, and I, or figured out really what, how to align sort of my passion with a purpose so that I could, you know, pursue something that was going to change my life. But I knew I had to get off the rig. So long story short, I decided I was going to start, you know, investing in myself, investing in businesses and, and learn how to build business. You know, I, I left school at 16, so I didn't have any formal education. And uh, so I, we, I lived in Thailand at the time and we, we, my business partner and I leased a block of land. We built a, a hot yoga hit facility um, over there, which was beautiful. Um, long story short on that, it flopped. It flopped. Uh, just being naive, not having enough business experience um, and, you know, being in a foreign country at the same time. So putting, putting all that aside, you know, there was a lot of learnings and I knew that I wanted to be in that realm, in that health and wellness space. Um, it was a passion of mine. I've always been interested in fitness. I've always been training, strength and conditioning, you know, from a young athlete as well, playing football. So uh, we took that and I saw a huge market opportunity with F45 training. And F45 training at that time was really exploding in Australia. And it hadn't yet really hit the US market as it is now. You know, they just did a... Um, an IPO and I got a, a $1.5 billion valuation. So they've done very well since then. But there was no F45s in the United States at the time. And we saw an opportunity. So we started doing a lot of research and uh, I couldn't decide whether to go to the United States because I hadn't actually been here before. I'd never been to the States and it was going off what my business partner had recommended. But we were also looking at the the Dubai market as well, which was very interesting to us. Um, and not, you know, talk about decision making, you know, not being able to make a decision and, and how do you process that as an individual personally so that you're, you're comfortable and you're confident in your decision. I, uh, I remember, I'll never forget, it was, it was 3 a.m. Christmas morning in my little, my little villa in Phuket and I couldn't sleep. So I just got up, jumped on my, uh, my moped and cruised down to the beach and it was beautiful. The, the moon was up. And I just said to myself, I'm like, I'm not going to leave this beach until I make the decision. So I just started cutting laps up and down the beach. Um, and then it hit me. It was like, bang, lifestyle. You know, lifestyle is a lot more important than just dollars and cents, you know, and you have to be in line in more than just one area of your life to be fulfilled. Um, and so from there, you know, four weeks later, booked a flight, landed in uh, LAX. And, you know, we did a lot of research in a lot of different areas as the whole, um, the whole of Southern California was open for us. So, and we gave ourselves being naive again, you know, uh, I was only 27 at the time, but we gave ourselves 14 days to basically network, set up the business, research, choose a territory and, uh, and then uh, negotiate on the space. And then, Another one of those kind of aha moments was sitting in the car in, in Santa Monica and 10 days in, and I just said, like, if we, if we go home now, there's, this isn't going to happen. There's no way we're going to be able to make this happen. We gave ourselves 14 days. What were we thinking, you know? Um, so we canceled our flights, and, you know, here we are, you know, five years later, and we, we opened a number of them across SoCal. And, uh, and it, it's been a great experience, you know? It's been, it's been a huge learning curve, but... One question that I got out of that from every, from a lot of different individuals in my network or from clients, from, you know, professional athletes to, you know, some friends and family that are very successful was, you know, what do you, what do you take 
to stay so consistent with your energy? What do you take to stay so consistently like on your game, so to speak? And I was, I remember I got introduced to the subscription box world as well um, during that time. And I was like, bang, light bulb went off. And I was like, there's a huge market opportunity here. Just because of the notion men don't know what they don't know or everyone like individuals don't know what they don't know. Right. And so after doing some research and realizing that there's a market opportunity, there's no one box on the, on the market that actually caters to men's performance. And uh, we built it out and we supply the best um, products, tools and resources on the market to allow men to perform better. And that's everything from, you know, um, hormone regulation products to nootropics to productivity to tech to supplements um, to some style and class and all that. So we built that out and we actually launched um, 90 days ago with a, to test the market with our, with our first boxes. And we got a lot of great feedback. Um, we've got, you know, a lot of users on the products now, which are really enjoying it. They love the brand. And, so now we're, we're looking at a, a new launch in um, Q4 and it's, it's exciting. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because you do quiz people on, you know, their values, activities, emotions, et cetera. Uh, and to me, three of them are obvious. The CEO box, the athlete box, uh, and of course the party boy box. Those yeah. are obvious that they would have distinctive properties of what it was. The one that seems a little more opaque is the gentleman box. Yeah. So what attributes does a, a gentleman box have? So how I came up with those four different um, categories is I realized like men are not a one size fits all. And for us to create something that was scalable, we couldn't create a hyper personalized, individualized box. So I broke them down into four categories. You know, you're either the entrepreneurial type and there's a little bit of each category inside all of us. You're either the entrepreneurial type, you know, an athlete or fitness enthusiast, gentleman, meaning more, more about style, more about some class. So we've got in there, we've still got productivity tools. We've still got our wellness products, but we threw some swag in there as well and some leather goods. So it's all about kind of what you gravitate to more uh, towards a little bit more. And if you, as you said, you jump on our website and you take that quiz, our algorithm is actually going to let you know which one you are more of than the other. Very cool. And what are you launching in the fall now? What's the, the, new, the new? Yeah, great question. So we've, now that we have enough market data and now that we have the relationships with the, the right suppliers and um, the bandwidth to create, we've gone, we've narrowed our, our offerings down to more of that hyper-personalized model. So you can actually customize a lot of the different products that are inside your box and get an even more personalized experience. So there's still some hard staple products in each one, but depending on how you go through and what's more important to you and the areas that you really need help with more, whether it's, you know, if you've got a lack of energy throughout the day or you're feeling unfocused or you're unsure if your testosterone is, is optimal, um, we have something that is going to be able to suit you and you can customize your box a little bit more to make it more personalized. I love it. Manlybox.com, M-N-L-Y-B-O-X.com. Check it out. Get your customized lifestyle box. Increase or decrease the interference. I would say increase the source within you to have the highest potential, to reach your highest potential in a consistent manner. What a great idea. No better way to do it than subscription-based boxes. Congratulations on F45 as well. I know my friend Brock and most likely your friend Brock is part yeah, of that. He's my business partner. He's a good lad. <laughs> he's a great lad. Yeah. Can you please tell him I said hi. I will, mate. I will. Mate, I will. Let's hang out in person, man. I look forward to meeting you as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, mate. I appreciate it. You got it. Keep up the great work. Take care. Cheers. All right. Check them out, manlybox.com. They're just killing it. Uh, Brock and Luke, two great dudes uh, from Down Under, just killing it in the Down Under of California, Southern California. Uh, so they do it direct sales. Uh, they source products. In the, oh, We'll have to ask them, T-Rule. Good question. All right, it's Talk About Tuesday. Let's take one more question that we're going to talk about. There's so many great ones in here. 
Uh, and so let's just grab it and keep it going. How do you get better and better when you have done so much in business? Uh, well, first of all, if you have the desire that you must be what you can be, if you enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential, uh, you will never uh, have uh, an end point. It will always be the journey and the expansion, growth, and acceleration that you can exhibit. Josh Landau from Indiana University is in the house. How are you? Good to see you. I will see you in a couple of weeks as I come down there. Uh, so please, everyone, be consistent and persistent in the pursuit of your own potential. Enjoy that pursuit. Do the best you can. Learn lessons and have fun. It's that simple. Make more money, help more people, and have more fun. It's that simple. Get the five daily practices. Know your what, your who, your how. Apply your do your now and apply your why to that now. I promise you, you will enjoy that. If you want anything, the open-ended question guide or the five daily practices, if you'd like me to add in my book, ebook, audio book, if you want me to sign a book, send it to you, pay for shipping of the book, not a problem. David at dmeltzer.com. You can always text me as well, 949-298-2905. David at dmeltzer.com, pin below. Check it out. Reach out to me. Happy to send you my templates and my books for free. Please join me every day. We are here. It's Talk About Tuesday. We're talking about making money, helping people, and having fun. Remember, everyone, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. We'll see you tomorrow.